unto you as being the author and finisher of our faith. God, you're our sustainer. You're our healer. You're our, uh, God, you're our redeemer. And we just claim you, God, as our personal Savior today. Father, we cry out to you this morning and ask you that you might touch every heart of everyone in this church and everyone, God, that's under the sound of our voice. We pray for all the sick and afflicted, those that couldn't be here. We ask you, God, to bring you healing as only you can. You're the great physician, God. And Lord, we pray some word today, somebody will be saved. I pray it would be here. I pray we'd see our families saved. Keep these that's on the road safe this morning. We pray, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I meant, we, I meant to get a song. We did, didn't we? Right. Oh, okay. Uh, Jennifer and Tracy's on their road back on the road back home from vacation, so keep them in prayer, okay? All right. Everyone, come on. The choir. Girl, I don't mind you sitting here today, but you're going to have to put a button on that, man. <laughs> I'll cut your pigtail off. Did I get you? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't a boxing twin. I ain't a boxing twin. I ain't a boxing twin. No, okay. I believe you got one. She's got to be quiet. Still great. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
page uh, 283. 
several children. I, I like, I won't see anybody come. Uh, I won't see them get right. When they get right, they'll do right. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But nobody knows to do right until they get right. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? And I, I'd like to see them Sunday school rooms full. Wouldn't y'all like to see them full? Amen. Uh, and I'm not just targeting people that's got children. Uh, I asked everybody to come to church, but I am so glad that I do get to ask people that's got children. Because I think we got some great teachers, and I think they deserve our working to bring people in that they can teach the children. Well, how are we going to get them out of the hell of the world if we can't bring them into the church, right? Hey, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll preach in a while, okay? How about this little light of mine?
Amen. All right, anyone else? <coughs> I have one for David. Okay, Connie. I'm going to do it out of the rain. Right over there. Got one right here, too. Here's one. What you want? One that you can one. sleep with a clothes hanger in her mouth sideways. Uh, I don't have a chance for my mind after a while. All right. It's good to be here. I'm, I'm kind of tired. I, I think I preached harder this morning than what I thought I did on the radio. I appreciate all of y'all that were watching and amening and praying for me. And uh, There's so much that needs to be told. And uh, I think uh, from last week there was over 50,000 uh, views there uh, from last week's service. So the God is blessing and God is reaching out and God is touching and God is helping, right? So uh, I want to give the Lord praise for what he's doing. Um, and, and I appreciate, uh, uh, appreciate uh, the day that uh, Donna called and checked on us uh, from what here Wednesday and she called and checked on us and I appreciate that, Donna. So I, I really do. I really do. I appreciate uh, her caring heart. Um, as I, have I left anybody out? All right, I'm going to turn it over to these guys for just a minute here. And uh, whichever one of y'all want to start up. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You ain't saying that? Mm -hmm. He's like, you get back up. Get my I don't want to treat you. Yes, baby. Y'all please be praying. Y'all please be praying for Janice there. I, I don't. Like I, I said, I was expecting when Wayne and Rosie come in to to hear that uh, she'd already left this world. But, you know, uh, 
it ain't over till God says it's over. Do y'all y'all know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, when they took the machine off, and I don't reckon nothing changed one way or the other, did it? Everything stayed. So uh, it's not over till God says it's over. And uh, uh, yesterday was was two years uh, since Joanne had her stroke, and so we we've, we've got two years, and, and she's stronger now than she was then. So uh, I want to give God praise for that.
Mm -hmm. Lynn, Sam, and Linda's trying to get up here. <coughs> I heard something happen to Wayne, but he didn't want to tell it. He went up there to Dollywood and he got on that Ferris wheel and got all the way to the top and it stopped. And he seen the sign, but he couldn't figure out what it said. So when they carried him back down, he jumped back on and he stood up and he said, well, he was going to get uh, read that sign. Well, he did. He stayed all night in, in the emergency room because the sign said, please don't stand up, you know. <laughs> shortest sentence is. What would y'all think the shortest sentence is? Aaron, what do you think the shortest sentence is? Uh, I am. <laughs> What's the longest sentence? I do. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say amen, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> some people ain't got that yet. You <laughs> went over somebody's head. <laughs> They'll get it about the middle of my sermon. They'll start laughing at me, won't they? Brothers and likes this one. and uh, 
Uh, so uh, I guess I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little hard to coach. If she goes one distance, I try to push for her more, push for more, push for more. And uh, doing real good. Of course, I move her leg, but uh, she's standing up and balancing on her cane. And, uh, she couldn't do that two years ago, so I give praise today. She can do that today. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, well, we're going to do, if, if y'all can bear with me, uh, I'd like to do uh, uh, this one song, and then if I can find Joanne's song, I'd like to do that one uh, also. Uh, maybe I can't find it, but uh, maybe I can. But it's good to be here, and I hope the Lord is blessing and touching out there. I might can remember most of it by heart. Okay. Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's me, Jesus. It's me. Again. Here's what I, I it's going to come my testimony. I, uh, walk with me. And, uh, amen. I, we, uh, I got to go through the field, one of the fields there, and I picked up two bucket loads of rocks and uh, uh, got them piled up at the altar, ready for prayer. Uh, so uh, I'll be, I'm anxious to, which I have been using them. I didn't pile them on the altar. I, I want them to be piled on as needed for a prayer. I don't want this to go up there and make a big pile for a scene. That that pile of rocks up there on top of my hill is not for a, not for a show. Uh, I didn't just pile them up. They're, they're piled up based on prayer needs. And every one of those rocks represent somebody's prayer. And there's there's not any of y'all here that's not got a rock on that altar. And so I, I thank the Lord for what he's done. And uh, that's old fashioned, yeah, but it still works. Amen. When I'm down in the past, you're with me. Well, I'm glad that God is still walking with us, ain't he? Amen. 
Amen. Let me look just for a minute. I might, I might get the words wrong. Uh, you know, I, I have been known to make them up as I go along. Uh, that's a trait of ours, I reckon. And I just had that song just, just this morning, but ain't it amazing how things can hide from it, right? But it can't hide long. We found it. Listen, y'all know, because we do it so much. So I, I'd like for you to help me when I get down in the course on it. And I'd like for you not to sing it. To the, we're not singing to this audience out here. We're not singing to one another in here. But we're, we're just singing this that it might enter straight into the throne room of God's glory. That God might hear and God might answer our prayers today. Y'all sing with us, amen. Lately, Lord, almost feel like dying. I wake up like a child long at Can't keep on crying. I can't find the strength to carry on. Jesus hits me again. I'm down on my knees again. I'm asking you.
I'm so thankful that the Lord is still answering prayer. You glad you're saved? Amen. 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 Let's talk just for a little bit out of the book of 1 Samuel, if you would. Chapter number 17. We probably won't get it all preached. But I know God has a purpose for all things today. Can I just tell you what I feel? I feel like there's a heart here that's very heavy. I feel like there's a heart here today that uh, from the inside is longing to express their feelings to the Lord. But for some reason you've let the devil talk you out of praying. Maybe you think God don't love you anymore, but he does. Maybe you think God never has loved you, but he has. Maybe you're here today and you're, you're facing hard battles and you don't know which way to turn. Well, the first place to turn is toward God. And you'll find that in honest prayer to him today. Cast thy cares upon me, he said, because he cares for us. He's inviting us to bring our burdens to him. You say, well, you don't know my problem. No, I don't have to know your problem. I just got to know my God. Amen. God is bigger than any problem we've got. Did you believe that? The devil friend of mine tries to soothe things over to deceive you, to lie to you, to cheat you out of everything that's good. But I'm going to talk to you about some things this morning, if God will let me. And we're going to be starting in verse 1. And, and I, I won't get all of these names right. 1 Samuel 17, you would. Verse 1, stand with us. This is not out of res respect for me, but it's out of respect for the Word of God. And uh, like I said, I won't get these names right, but uh, maybe if you can pronounce them better, you come on up here and do it for me. Huh? All right? Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, they were together together at Shoshal, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shoshal and Ezekiah in Espidamon. I got that in pretty close, didn't I? And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. There was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. He had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing... The shield went before him, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why you come out to set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you gave us this day. Father, I thank you, Lord, that all power still abides within you. I'm glad, Lord, that there's nothing out of control. God, the, the devil may be running on a long road, but God, he's still your devil. And God, he's still under control today. And God, he will reach the end of his rope according to thy precious word. And I believe that today. Father, until then, and as life is given to this body, we face the things that right come against us. And God, sometimes the battles are hard to fight, and the valleys are deep, and the mountains are high. But, oh God, you've never left us nor forsaken us, but you've been with us every step of the way. And God, one day we're going to walk out of this world into the new world to come. God, as we rest in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Father, until then, we pray we keep on working for the Lord. We keep on striving to see people get right. God, we pray this morning for this congregation, both here and those we can't see. God, we know not the hearts, but we can try the spirit. If 
Father, somewhere today someone needs to talk to you. Father, I pray that they'll give in, God willingly and submissively. And God pray in earnest today that you might hear and answer their prayer. Somewhere somebody needs to be saved. God, I pray they'll be saved today. Somebody needs to be touched. I pray they'll be touched today. Strengthen us now as the body of Christ that we serve you, God, with all of our heart here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. The Lord began to speak to me about the thought when the giant shows up. When the giant shows up. You know, this that I've read to you is very familiar scripture. In fact, uh, you know, the story of David and Goliath has been told so many times, countless times, and read to children and preached to poems because it's a very unique circumstance. All of Israel found themselves in, in a time of fear far greater than the number of warriors that confronted them when the giant showed up. They were not afraid of, a, of the vast armies. They were not afraid of the war that had been set before them. But the fear came when this giant showed up. Now I want to talk to you about this today. Amen. Goliath was Gath was his name, and, and he was certainly a giant considered among mankind. When you calculate this, he was nine feet, nine inches tall. His coat of armor weighed 125 pounds. The beam of his spear weighed 17 pounds. The spearhead was about 16 pounds. And his protective shield was quite large, and an attendant would carry the shield and run out in front of him before the battle. But what made this man so fearful? You know, they could have uh, they could have all pounced upon him, couldn't they? They had set the battle uh, in array, and no doubt there was death on both sides, no doubt many. And, and, and that didn't discourage them, that didn't deter them, uh, uh, deter them and, and they were not dismayed. But everything changed when the giant showed up. And it will in your life and mine. You may be here today and everything is, you're sailing on smooth water. You may be here today, there's no problems. You're problem free. Your family uh, is, is at their, their highest plateau of life. But things will change when the giant shows up. And I'll guarantee you that uh, based on personal experience. What made this man so fearful? As I said, they, they were enough. They could have pounced on him and subdued him, but they didn't. The threat this giant presented was Bring to mind, for a one-on-one -on -one battle, a confirmation of one-on-one, -on -one, a battle to seal the fate of the people. You know, everything's different when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Well, we can sit in our churches today and we can, we can say great words and we can, we can speak out to people, we can, we can quote them scripture, we can do all of this, but everything changes when it's a one-on-one -on -one battle with the giant today. He wasn't calling for the army to come out and fight him. He was calling on some man, one person, to come out and fight him. This was not a, a technique that was unfamiliar, written in mind for him. Uh, matter of fact, they, they did that. They, they would choose somebody from each side and they would go out and they'd fight and whoever won, that, that, won, that was the war. But it was the statue a friend of mine of this man. It was the stout words that he said against him. He spoke without any fear because he didn't feel like he had any fear. He didn't believe there was one person in all of that camp that could subdue him. So he threatened them. He threatened them. No one was going to stand against this giant and he was a champion at that and up to this time, friend of mine, it, it had been a typical war. It had been fought the usual way. But as I said, when the giant showed up, everything took a new meaning. And he cried out to the armies of Israel and he defied them. And no doubt he mocked them. And no doubt, friend of mine, that he cast his spite at them. That's, that's what our giants do. Our giants try to, to be us, try to beat us down, try to bring us to a point to where we lose all hope. 
And so many times we, we give in, don't we? This was their greatest threat. I, I, I thought about this. Have you ever found yourself in a predicament of similar nature? Not a physical giant. We're not crazy enough. I, I, I wasn't going to go out there and, and, and challenge Andre the Giant to a wrestling match. Would you? Well, I saw Hulk Hogan pick him up. You know, if you'd have noticed longer a little bit, you'd have seen Andre the Giant got a running start and, and got himself started up. Huh? Amen. But I've seen Hulk Hogan split, tear his shirt off. Yeah, but ain't no telling how many times he washed it. It's probably about rotten. But I have to say on his behalf, he's changed his life around. Now he's talking about God. Amen. And I'm proud of that. But I, I want to stick to this. Friend of mine, I, I'm not talking about a physical giant or a fleshly body, but something that threatens you in, in the way that you've never been challenged before. Have you had any of that in your life? Has there ever been something come against you that you had never had to face in all the days of your life? Oh, you've heard of other people. You've seen uh, uh, what the destruction that these things brought to other people, but now it's in your house. Now it's in your life. Amen. I think about, I'm talking about something that totally knocked you off your feet because you weren't prepared for it. You know, the devil wants to send the giant in our life when we're least prepared for it today. He's not out to start a battle with us if we're spiritually strong and stuck back in our faith and a uh, 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 friend of mine, study the Word of God, apply the Word of God, and live the life that God wants us to live. He wants to wait till we get weak and frail. He wants to find something in our life that He can weasel Himself in. Amen. Think about that. In the midst of your struggles and your trials, when you were putting forth all the strength that you had to stay afloat, then the giant shows up. And, and this giant has many names. Just out, this one was Goliath that we'd read about. But it come in many sizes today. Amen. But there's one purpose, and that's to destroy you and to bring you down and to fill you with fear. So that you'll be more relied on your own strength than you are to call on the name of the Lord to cast your cares upon him. See, the, the devil wants to beat you to down to where you think it, it's all in you. That you forget about God. That you forget about seeking the face of the Lord. That's what the devil wants today. Goliath had, a friend of mine had no takers and and he stood bold and confident and never once he thought he would have. The Bible says for 40 days, for 40 days, amen, the giant, he just kept coming, beseeching the armies of Israel to produce a warrior for a fight. And, and each time fear ransacked the, the very camp of Israel and they fled from him. I imagine old Goliath, by the time them 40 days was over, he done grew a whole nother foot. Because he got bolder and bolder and bolder. Can you imagine how he must have felt when all of Israel fled away from him? He must have felt like he was God. That's what the giant wants in your life. The, the giant wants to keep you in fear and keep you running away from God instead of coming to God. Amen. I'm sure the devil gloats over his success against us, don't you? He relentless in his attacks. He has no shame. Do you realize with the devil, there's no such thing as hitting below the belt? The devil has no sense of fairness in this fight. He doesn't care how he defeats you. He doesn't care how he has to shame you, disgrace you. There's no such thing with him. That's hitting below the belt. Nothing's illegal. It, it, it's a no holds barred contest. It's a race to the wind. And, and no such thing as a fair fight with the devil. He's not going to fight you fair. He's going to be dirty. Dirty. 
So we all are too, too, too young to remember uh, that wrestling that came on at Chattanooga, but they had a little Japanese guy named Tojo Yanomoto. You never know if he was going to be clean or dirty. Everybody loved him when he was clean, but, uh, uh, you know, they all hollered at him. It was all a show, uh, amen. They said he had a restaurant, that you couldn't go in that restaurant and say anything against him because the people loved him. But what tickled me, that friend of mine, when, when he got up there talking to Mr. Harry Thornton, he's going on to be with the Lord, I hope. But he'd get up there and he's talking about how he was going to wrestle. He said, who know me, Mr. Howard? Me who's Coco de Led? Me who's Coco de Led? In other words, I'm going to fight dirty, but I am going to win. And that's the tactic the devil uses today. Amen. This one, nine foot, nine inches tall, thought, friend of mine, that it was fair for some normal sized guy to come out there and fight against him. Amen. When the giant shows up, and he will, there's no way to bypass confrontation. You cannot bypass this giant in your life. You cannot ignore the giant that's going to come up in your life. Amen. we got to prepare, friend of mine, ourselves by the word of God and by prayer, sincere prayer, and to take the battle to him and, and not run away. I, I believe it would make all the difference in the world if, if we begin to take the battle to the devil rather than trying to dismiss ourselves and continue to run away. So many of us are so afraid of the devil that we're running trying to hide from the devil. Well, we should be taking the battle to the devil. The devil's not stronger than God. The devil doesn't have more power than God. The only way the devil has more power in your life than God, you give it to him. The devil's not omnipresent, all knowledgeable, all powerful. If he was, he could be God. The devil ain't God. He just wants to be God. Amen. I believe the church is in a mess it's in today because we have run away from the issues rather than stand up and fight against the issues today. We're more worried about being politically correct than we are about being Biblically correct. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Have you considered, friend of mine, that the Israelites, they may not have even known that Goliath was amongst the Philistines. They might not even know he was with them. In 1 Samuel 17 and 25, the Bible says, Having fled when they saw Goliath, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. In other words, as you read that, it's as though they hadn't seen him. They didn't know that he was in the game. The, the giant likes to show up when you're not looking for him. Amen. He's always showed up when he's unexpected. Amen. He hopes to find prey among the weak and the frail and the unprepared. And boy, I tell you, he's having a good time of it today, isn't he? The devil delights in, in feeling that he's already won the battle without a fight. How many times has the devil already won the battle in your life without even a fight? You don't even try to stand up. You just give yourself in. You don't pray about it. The altars are forsaken. Service side or service side or service while our God is destroying our life. Whatever name is God that's in your life. You know, only God can cast the devil out of your life today. Only God can cast demons out of your life. Somebody said, I don't have any. Uh, amen. Have you talked to God about that lately? Amen. The host of the demonic force of uh, these demons is, friend of mine, is what is activating the will of the devil in our lives today. As I said, the devil's not everywhere, but he's got all this host of demons and there's not a one of us here today that hasn't been subjected to this demonic ways. And only if you're strong in God have you resisted, otherwise you have given in. You know what the devil tells you? Everything's okay. Everything's all right. Amen. He can beat you down to, friend of mine, you, you look like a, a warped too before, but he'll tell you you're okay. What a liar. The Bible says he's a father of all lies today. And I believe that, don't you? 
The devil doesn't expect a stand to be made against him. And, and while all the hosts of the army were shackled by their fears and they were fretting over all they couldn't do, there was one among them friend, that saw the action of this giant unacceptable and untolerable. You see, he had defied God's people. And therefore, by doing that, he had defied God. Amen. And we ought to look at it the same way. At, when they defied God in, a, in, the, in this land or any land, they have defied God's people. When they defy God's people, they have defied our God. Are you listening? It meant something to this one man. There was something building up inside of David. And, and that, that seemingly the, the others just couldn't feel. David said, is there not a cause? Look what's going on. This uncircumcised Philistine, in other words, that was said, this hedonistic, paganistic man has come up, friend of mine, defying the armies of God, defying God, amen, acting like he's got it. Is there not a cause? Should not somebody stand up amen. against this giant? Hmm. Somebody needs to confront this enemy, he's saying, and show a stand of faith in the almighty power of God. David said to Saul, let no man fail because of him, heart fail because of him. He said, thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. Saul looked at David and told him, thou, thou art but a youth, and, and he a man of war from his youth. And, and Saul was looking on the outside, but he couldn't see the man of God on the inside. And, and David told him about the lion and the bear that he slew that come into his father's flock. And he assured him that this Philistine would be no different, seeing that he had defied the armies of the living God. He said, God save me from the lion. God save me from the bear. I slew him. And this man is coming to defy the armies of the living God. It ain't going to be no different. Let no man fail, I'm going to go fight him. Amen. Mm. David showed his faith that God would deliver him. And so, a friend of mine, he went out. The one thing for sure was that this giant wasn't going away without a fight. And I want to tell you that here this morning. And you just well to get ready to start your battle this today because now you know what you're going to have to do and there ain't no way you can ignore it anymore. The giant in your life is not going to go away without a fight. Without a fight. Every giant that confronts us demands a challenge. Brute strength is not always the answer. Physical weapon is not always the answer. Saul dressed David in his armor and put his helmet of brass on him and his coat of mail and girded him with his sword. But, but David knew he couldn't go out with them things while he hadn't proved them. That wasn't what God was calling him to use. David was a shepherd. And what he was, had proven was a shepherd's weapons. Amen. This was going to be a contest of faith and inner strength. And David was giving himself as a vessel for the Lord's using. And he knew, all that he knew was a staff and a sling. A shepherd's weapon to face the enemies of the flock. And, and, and this was what God had given him to deliver him from the enemy again. You know, he chose five stones out of the brook and, and he put them, the Bible says, in his shepherd's bag and his sling in his hand and, and he went to meet the Philistines. Sometimes I thought about how we lose sight in the battle because we tend to measure the size of the giant rather than hold on to the assured victory. You won't know when David had won the war, the very moment he left camp. He already had the victory before he ever got on the battlefield with Goliath. Why? Because he was going out in the power of God and the instruction of God and the way God was sending him. He already knew. He had no fear that he was going to come back a loser. Amen. The story behind the five stones is that Goliath is said to have four brothers. And David wasn't afraid of missing his target. He, he didn't need five shots. But what he was doing was prepared for the long haul. When he got to life, there might have been another one come, and another one come, and another one come, and another one come. So he was ready for the whole battle. He wanted to fake it. The whole thing, the total battle, he was ready for it. He wasn't going to just win one and then gloat over that. 
to engage and maintain steadfast until the job was done. That was his ideal. When Goliath mocked him and disdained him and David unveiled his secret weapon, Goliath wasn't expecting that. I wonder how many of us have the secret weapon that David had. He said, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a, a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. He said, You bring yours, I'll bring mine. You want to know how confident he was? He said, This day will the Lord deliver thee in my hand. I will smite thee. I will take thy head from thee. I will give the carcasses of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the fear of the fear of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. We need to engage in our fight with the assurance and the confidence that we are winners. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. That all the world can see there is a God in our midst and who He is today. This day, the giant meets God and the giant loses. This could be the day in your life and mine that the giant meets God. And the giant loses today. Now we know the outcome of the story. David slew the giant, removed his head, and carried it in Jerusalem. It had been taught uh, through the rabbis over there that uh, no, we don't know where David buried the head when he carried it over to Jerusalem. We don't know. But it's been taught down through uh, the, rabbi, the, the rabbi's tradition that, friend of mine, the very place that the cross of Jesus Christ was put is the very place David buried the head of Goliath. Wouldn't that make a lot of sense? And ain't that something? Ain't that deep? And ain't that spiritual? When you go back to Genesis and find, a uh, friend of mine, that the devil was going to bruise the hill, but the Lord was going to bruise his head. Amen. Ain't that something? Do you know it's true? No, but I sure do like to, I like to think that, don't y'all? It's been handed down to them. Amen. I don't know where he buried his head, but I know he did. Amen. What began as one of the worst days of their life became a great victory because the giant was introduced to Almighty God. We're never going to have victory today until we introduce this giant that has come. Maybe there's more than one in your life. We're never going to have victory until we introduce this thing or these things to the Lord God by submissive prayer to Him today. Most of us today have experienced circumstances, ain't we? Where the giant showed up. You know what? He came as pain. He came as suffering. He came as great sickness. He came as financial difficulties. He came as heart-wrenching diagnosis. That have been given into lives. And, and the names can go on and on. You can call your, your own giant by name. But he has showed up. You cannot deny that the giant has showed up. In your life. Right? His only intention is to conquer and destroy. Not to say that these giants. Been to mind now. Certainly made their marks upon the land they have. But I'm thankful that not every giant that showed up stood his ground. There are many that still stuck fast and, and they're still strong and they're, they're taking out all of their vengeance on God's people and other people today. But I'm here to tell you there, there is many that has not stood. There's many that has been defeated by people down on their knees crying out to God, agonizing with God and seeking the power of God in their life. There's many giants that have fallen after the victory found in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 I'm on a hush in a minute. Many of these giants have met servants of God like David, that was whose faith had been proved and tried, and who had walked through the fires of trials and tribulations and, and did so hand in hand with Jesus. And when they made it to the other side, they could look back and say, Not by my strength, but by God's grace. Not by my strength, but by God's grace, I made it. You know, David stood only with the weapons he had proved 
only what he had confidence in. Not much in the eyes of the warriors, I'm sure. Could you imagine the talk that was amongst the armies of Israel as David left the camp with nothing but a sling and some rocks and a staff? Here they were all decked out in, in their fine armor, shaking like a dog under a leaf, sweating like a Coca-Cola on a barbecue day. And here goes this boy out to meet a giant. A young man, no warrior. He, as a matter of fact, he was ruddy. The Bible said he was ruddy. He, he didn't even look like a warrior. Here he goes out of camp with nothing more than a stick to them, a sling and, and some rocks. Didn't look like much to them. Didn't look like much to the enemy, did it? Amen. But in the eyes of God, it was a whole arsenal. He had everything he needed. Are you listening? Everything he needed. The question is, David took a staff and a sling. What do you have when the giant shows up in your life? David had everything he needed. The question is, what do you have? It's going to take more than a telephone to call somebody. You're going to have to have a little uh, uh, defense within your own life. You're going to have to be, friend of mine, able to pray and call upon the name of the Lord. You, you sit around and wait on somebody else to deliver. You're not going to get deliverance through somebody else's prayer. You're going to get deliverance through your prayer, through your dedication, through your steadfastness, through your faith. Today. I'll pray with you, but it'll take your faith to get deliverance today. Did you know that? How's your prayer life? Have you put on the whole armor of God? Are you a student of God's Word? And, and these are all going to be important and necessary when the giant shows up. When you begin to realize that it's out of your hands and it's all in God's. That you're powerless by your own strength. And you're certainly, friend of mine, pray that you had honed in on these things a little bit earlier when the giant shows up. I'll be closing, son, if you want to get a song. Ask you this question. Wouldn't you agree that our greatest defense for any type of confrontation is to be prepared? Be prepared. If you tell me, friend of mine, David, when you walk out of the church this morning, I'm going to hit you flat in the nose. I'm going to be prepared when I walk out. Because when, when you're standing up here to hit me in the nose, I'm going to squat down and kick you wherever I can. Right? Who not? Who not? Milwaukee woke up back there. <laughs> so our greatest defense is to be prepared. In other words, don't wait until you're overtaken by the storm, but be watchful. To have a spiritual awareness of all the things that are around you. Don't, friend of mine, ignore the possibility of the giant showing up in your life. Don't sit around and say, well, they must have done something to, to deserve this. You don't have to do nothing for the giant to show up. Matter of fact, a friend of mine, by doing nothing sometimes makes the giant show up. But but you don't have to go out here, a friend of mine, and run in the hell holes of the world for the giant to show up. He'll show up. The probability of, of you having a problem in your life is, is probably 100% today. If you don't have it today, just wait for it. It'll come. It'll come. It'll come. Amen. The one, they used to preach and get behind the pulpit and all the call. They would say something like this. Say, uh, it's the gas that's in the hearse there to pick you up. That's a good question, right? Is what's in the hearse going to be used to come to pick you up? But it doesn't matter if it's there to pick you up. 
What matters is how you left before they got there. We're all going to die. We can't stop that. But we have a choice in how we're found when these things come. If we do nothing, we'll be the victim of our own negligence. I thought about now's the time to take action, to pray for spiritual renewal, to seek the Lord, to strengthen us in our weakness and ask for his wisdom and spiritual direction. Don't wait till tomorrow. Somebody said, well, I'll wait till some other service when it's more livelier and more people are, are bouncing up to the altar. Amen. Well, friend of mine, there may never be a service like that for you. God may be speaking. I know I'm not trying to scare you. I'm preaching to you the realness of, of, of life. And we're not promised another day. Proverbs 27 says, boast not of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth while you sit on the pew boasting of tomorrow death may come today what what are you going to have then are you ready if death comes today amen <coughs> listen to me death don't uh, hell don't have to get in no hurry for those that want to go there hell is a very patient place did you know that? If you live to be 150 and you die lost, guess hell will still be right there waiting on you. You understand what I'm saying? Hell is a patient place. Though it enlarges itself without measure, yet it is patiently waiting for all who wants to come today. I said I'd hush. We need to take advantage of the altar, both in the church and in our home. You say, well, I don't have no altar in our home. An altar, friend of mine, we have a physical altar here today, but, but the, the spiritual altar is any place you make contact with God. It can be out in the woods. It can be, friend of mine, in your bathroom or your, or your living room. Or you, it, it don't matter. The altar, the spiritual altar, is where we make contact with God. This is a physical altar, and I love it. It's a good place to come. But, friend of mine, it is meaningless if you don't make connection when you get here. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Meaningless. Amen. To know what to do. But to do it not benefits nothing. To, take, to know what I've said, to believe what I preach, but yet sit in this church or out there in the unseen on and do nothing, nothing has no benefit at all to you here today. And I just wanted to say that despite what the devil may be telling you. We don't know when the giant's going to show up. We don't know whether or not he's already turned down the path that leads to us right now. We, we don't know that. We don't know what's going to happen in a little while. We don't know what's going to happen in the next heartbeat. We don't know if this is our last day or if we've got numerous days. We just don't know. We don't know if the giant, some problem or some trouble or some disaster, some phone call that we're going to get when we get home or before we get home, we don't know if that giant has already turned down the avenue of our life. Amen. 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 But we do know that our help is in the Lord. Amen. We do know, as John wrote, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do y'all believe that today? Amen. We can be ready when he gets there. It starts with prayer and supplication unto the Lord. Who among you today wants to be ready when the giant shall? Well, I'm going to tell you this before I ask you to bow your head. Our actions, have you ever heard that action speaks louder than words? Our actions dictate our honesty. If we say we want to be ready when the giant shows up, our actions, friend of mine, will dictate our honesty. So what's it going to be as far as your heart and my heart is concerned today? When the giant shows up. Oh, this message could preach on and on and on and on. 
Amen. Y'all been awful quiet. I'm, I, I'm hoping y'all are listening. Amen. It ain't something you can jump and run down the aisle with. You ain't going to run down, whoa, I got a giant in my life. <laughs> right? It's a message that draws us closer to God in, in honest sincerity and thinking and make us ponder on what's in our heart. It's got to go further than this up here, this noodle that you got between the ears. The devil can can deal with this noodle between the ears. He can he can make you think things and change your thoughts. Amen. Friend of mine. But you can keep the devil out of your heart by keeping your heart close to God. Are you ready for the giant? You bow your head while Joseph plays. <laughs> will only have meaning to you if you'll let it. Has God give you a warning? Do you feel like deep down in the bottom of your heart God is speaking to you? There's a confrontation coming. There's a storm brewing out there. The winds is already blowing. The dark clouds have begun to gather in your life. Something's coming. Something's coming just as sure as you're sitting here today. God's trying to warn you. Who will listen to God's word today? Who will believe what God has to say? Who will prepare themselves for the battle? Who will make themselves ready? the giant that is coming. Would you come? Come on, my God, speak it to you. Are you facing things you, you just you just don't know? Maybe, maybe there's some fear in your in your life. Those that will hear this on down the road and, and the many people that will hear 
this message. Oh God, may thy spirit send forth thy word in power and demonstration thereof. And may heart submit themselves wholly to thee, God. I beg you, Lord, let there be no hindrance in my heart. I'm just a messenger, God. I'm not the messenger. I pray I've done everything you want me to do. But I preach what you want me to preach. Now, God, I give it to you. Thy will be done, oh God, I pray. In Jesus' name. I said I don't call I don't have power to call a prayer line I just have the power to pray when the line is formed and uh, we just want to give God some thanks and uh, we, we, uh, we're going to pray for all of them but you know uh, uh, Joanne's not uh, walking in the respect that y'all might think but I want to give God the thanks that she's come as far as she has come and uh, that's something to be thankful for ain't you amen, amen. amen. when's she going to walk when God gets ready when God gets ready amen until then, to God be the glory and the praise, right? Amen. 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 Let us pray together. Pray this. Pray one for another there. Our Father, O oh Lord, as we come to you, God, this morning, we come Lord, beseeching amen. you, Lord, as, as the God of our life. We realize that all power, God, is, uh, is in you. Lord, you invest that power within us through prayer and uh, uh, seeking thy face and believing thy word and standing upon the set the Lord. And God, we come today uh, realizing, Lord, that, Father, you're the great physician. And God, when, when the doctors came, you still came, Lord. We just bring these needs to you today. I, I want to thank you, God, for bringing us down this road as far as you've brought us. I want to thank you, God, that we can look back and, and realize, God, that through these past two years that we haven't made one step that you haven't been with us. And, uh, God, you helped us and you've shielded us from many things that you've sure supplied our needs. And I want to thank you for that, God. And I ask you to continue to touch. I ask you for your grace and for your mercy. I ask you, God, just to... Uh, uh, put your God, your hedge around us and make us strong and let us be servants of the Lord and uh, God let us carry forth the work that you have us to do and I pray that many souls will be saved as, as we try to bring forth the gospel Lord and as it reaches out to where it's reaching that somebody might be saved and touch these that have gathered for prayer you know the needs of their bodies and others in the congregation the giants that showed up in their life I pray for them those in the unseen audience God, that are, are seeking thy face, they're facing problems, uh, Father, there are things that's come to their lives, I pray for them, and I pray for victory, sweet victory, through the name of Jesus, uh, we claim that for your glory and your honor, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. All of you glad to be in church, say amen. 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 Uh, I, I know it's a 20 to 1. Uh, amen. Uh, I, hope, I hope that it wasn't a boring service to you. I hope that you got something out of it to make you glad to be in church. Amen. 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 And uh, that it'll help you down the road. Amen. So uh, uh, all of you that... Uh, Think I've kept you too late? Why, just be thankful that when you get to the restaurant, they got to cook your food fresh. Amen. <laughs> all right, all right. All of them to go plates is already gone, man. All right. Linda, wouldn't you like to be number one on the Sunday school uh, roster next week? Yes. yes all right. So she's she, she's really you? proud of having more in her class this week than than all the rest. My kids did great showing up. I know. I know they did. I, I know they did. They showed up. 
and probably some of them showed out. But uh, <laughs> let's say goodbye to our Facebook crowd. May God bless. Amen.